Hi, Sasha. Uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, can you please tell us a little bit more about yourself? What would be the story of, of Sasha or like some key points? Thanks, Philip. Uh, first off, it's uh, really good to be here and speak to the, let's say, younger generation. So uh, really, really proud uh, to be here. Yeah, the story of Sasha. Uh, interesting. Um, so I'm Irish Croatian. I was born in Dublin, Ireland. Um, Grew up there, spent roughly 18, 19 years of my life there. Um, my father was Croatian, so let's say there was always a little link uh, back to Croatia. My baka uh, was, uh, of course, Croatian, and I used to visit her from time to time, um, but really didn't, let's say, know Croatia so well. But uh, around the age of 19, 20 years old, my father got a job back in Croatia after being many, many years in, in London, Ireland, etc. And I came over and I just really, really enjoyed it. And I decided to stay, let's say, one month, then maybe, okay, two months, and then maybe six months. And okay, let me but give it one But we caught your heart, year. right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I really fell in love with the, with, the, with the country. I really fell in love with the lifestyle. I really fell in love with the beauty of, let's say, Dalmatia, where I was initially there. So it was really interesting uh, is there the something beginning. specific that caught your eye or that would you like to point out or well not really but you can imagine as a 19 20 year old uh, young man uh, let's say with uh, you would spend i would spend my day swimming and uh, having fun with friends and stuff like this it was just a paradise really so at the time coming from a rainy dublin <laughs> it was it was let's say really really nice so i guess that's really kind of um, in a very high level my my story so yeah mixed mixed backgrounds mixed cultures and I'm, I'm, I'm currently living here in Zagreb. Uh, we'll get to the work part, but I just want to know at the very beginning, since uh, it, it's a topic that we really want to pursue with the students all around Croatia and, and Europe, uh, the importance of passion. What are you passionate about? What, what mm -hmm. like motivates and uh, inspires you? Mm -hmm. It can be personal, it can be business, it can be family. Yeah, many things, I guess. Uh, I always had an entrepreneurial spirit, so I guess business um, kind of... In, uh, excites me and I seem to have a kind of a natural drive that I like to set my own let's say targets my own goals uh, whatever that may be if it's in sport or if it's in business but I I really just do have a passion for let's say uh, business and entrepreneurship and that was kind of where I was always kind of going back to and always exploring when I was younger. Uh, what did your journey look like? If you go, if we move back all the way from uh, primary high school, how how did you end up from that perspective here? Yeah, good uh, good question. I guess um, I went through, let's say, normal primary school, um, secondary school, etc. Um, I just in Ireland, uh, yes, right? in Ireland, yes, in Ireland. Uh, very nice schools. I I, I let's say uh, have friends today that are like my brothers that are let's say of course I still uh, keep in touch with and I go to visit them from time to time but let's say coming to let's say 17 18 let's say the end of high school I was a little bit unsure but what I wanted to do if I'm really honest with you I had a passion maybe for sport at the time for music at the time um, but I was really looking to maybe start my own businesses and that was kind of the direction that I wanted to go in so um, yeah, I guess. Did you know in any in any specific area, or is this like okay, business in general, and I'll gonna do what I'll figure it out? Yeah, you know, I had loads of ideas as 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 a young man. I, I kind of wanted to do many things all at once. I was very interested also in real estate uh, at the time, so I was kind of you know I, I would look up to the kind of world. Uh, let's say famous investors and and stuff like this and I was always looking to do something but the opportunities were quite I don't want to say limited in Ireland but as a as 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 a young guy you know there was big companies coming in it was maybe hard to start up I didn't know where to start of course you're always kind of wondering how do I get the funding or you know who's going to be in my team and you know it, it was always a challenge but uh, I was always let's say looking to do something by myself. Uh, looking back to you as a student, uh, what were you like 
Are there any uh, specific I, stuff? Or? I, I wasn't great, if I'm honest with you. I was, I was quite good until the age of maybe 13, 14, where I, where I really took, uh, let's say, education quite seriously. And I was really proud to, let's say, uh, get the good grades and, and, let's say, show my parents how well I'm doing. But I would say that in the, let's say, teenage years, I kind of uh, just like to be with my friends and just have a good time. And I think the education kind of came second. But um, I kind of regret that now a little bit, if I'm honest with you. I wish I was a little bit more focused as a student, I have to say. And uh, how about later on, after, yeah, after high school? Uh, yeah, later on, I kind of, let's say, uh, woke up a little bit uh, <laughs> and kind of realized that I want to um, develop my, my skills. Because I realized that if I wanted to make it in business or if I wanted to lead people or, or let's say, succeed in anything, I needed the core and basic skills in business, if that is, you know, financial skills, marketing skills, sales, sales skills, or whatever it may, that may be. I just wanted to kind of, let's say, polish my tool set before I went uh, out. Back when you were young, was there anybody like a teacher or a professor or someone in business uh, outside, let's say, of course, your family? That would that had like great impact on you uh, and why? Um, not really one specific person. Um, I have to say my 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 father at the time was always a bit of a, a visionary, so he was always kind of um, guiding me and leading me by example in some ways. But I looked up to let's say um, entrepreneurs like uh, Richard Branson, for example. I remember reading his book like three or four times because I was just amazed by his journey and you know how he started very young and how he went into different businesses and he for me as a young uh, person was like an idol because he had you know uh, let's say his uh, virgin airways but he also had virgin records and you know he was using his brand and his passions and he was getting into businesses in multiple areas so he was kind of a bit of an idol for me that i used to look up to and many others like 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 him uh if you i mean i i don't want to compare uh, croatia to ireland in terms of classes and all that stuff did you have like anything that you excelled at something that was like your uh, worst nightmare in terms of uh, classes or areas that you were really bad at and something that you were really good at um i liked i liked physics a lot because i liked the way let's say i guess that's how the world works right so i really kind of liked that subject um, I wasn't the best uh, student, but I in enjoyed that one the most. And, and I used to be very good in, in math, but then later on I kind of, uh, let's say, uh, lost a little bit started of Started to decline. <laughs> exactly, started to decline a little bit. And that's my biggest, maybe, um, how would I say, my biggest regret, that I didn't stick at that a little bit more because, you know, you need math daily, you know, and that's something that, you know, I wish I, I kind of excelled at uh, a little bit more. And something that was like a total alignment for you, that it was, like, it was painful for you to, to learn or look at the book or something. Well, in, in Ireland, we, we had to learn Gaelic. So we had to learn the Irish language, let's ah, say like okay. that, right? And that was always a class that nobody really wanted to uh, pay attention to because it's a kind of, unfortunately, a little bit of a dying language. It's only spoken in a few few places in Ireland so that was something that I kind of just used to hate but again it's something that I wish I knew now a little bit more of <laughs> but you know as a, as a young man you don't see those opportunities that you have yeah uh, let's move on to all the stuff that you are doing today okay. uh, at Rima's group your title says chief of staff Yes. Uh, can you explain that a little bit? What is it that you actually do? Yes, I can. I know the title is a little bit uh, confusing, but essentially I would uh, describe it as two things. One is uh, essentially being a deputy to the CEO. So um, uh, Mate Rimas is a very, very, let's say, busy and wanted man by, let's say, many direct reports of his. Um, you, you know, he's working on many projects um, and he has a lot of responsibilities. And essentially, um, he cannot be in uh, all of Two the locations at, at once. Time. Exactly, right? So, Mate might go on a trip, uh, for example, to the US for a week, and the show must go on. So, he needs someone that he can trust um, to kind of uh, drive his vision, uh, let's say, um, do his tasks, essentially, and, you know, follow up on uh, basically the vision of the company and make sure things are, are getting done. So, let's say that's one aspect of it. And the second aspect would be kind of be the gatekeeper of the group as such and by that i mean we have clear let's say group targets visions strategies and keeping an eye that uh, we are on track all of the time and also being a little bit of a let's say um 
a partner as such to kind of uh, brainstorm, to discuss status, uh, kind of just be uh, be there to kind of, um, how would I say, support the vision and make sure that we're achieving our targets and goals. And I suppose also filtering a bunch of stuff. That That's a big many, part of it. That's many. a big part of it. Yeah, essentially, it's not just from for 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 Mate, but it's also for the rest of the management group, right? To make sure we're really focusing on the, on the on the topics that we must close as a group that we must get done because everybody, if you can imagine, is so busy. And sometimes, if you're so busy, you're missing the bigger picture. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you're looking like like this, but you need to look a little bit wider. And I'm the kind of guy that says, "Hey guys, let's 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 actually, expand our yeah, horizons. Yeah, let's right? close this topic first, and then move on." So it's kind of just keeping an eye on all of the tasks, uh, making sure that we're implementing, and of course, being an advisor and support to uh, Mate and the group members. Uh, the company really excelled; uh, has grown exponentially over the years. Uh, for all the people that maybe don't really know, or how could you briefly explain what does uh, the Remats uh, group actually do? Yeah, uh, good question. We do a lot. <laughs> so um, let's say the group is essentially the overarching, let's say, um, group. And then we have different brands essentially on, uh, underneath that uh, group. So the first um, the first brand is Bugatti, right? So Bugatti or Bugatti Remats, is, uh, as it's now called, is uh, OEM. So uh, let's say producing automobiles, right? Uh, pr producing vehicles. And um, we have inherited or taken over control of the Bugatti brand. So it's, let's say, our job to, uh, let's say, um, continue to build this amazing brand, which is the pinnacle of, of let's say, the car industry, essentially. So that's one of the, let's say, brands. The other brand is, of course, the Remac brand. So everyone should know the Remac Nevera by now. This is, you know, just an amazing car, the fastest production car in the world. So. This is uh, also, let's say, a part of the Bugatti Remat. So essentially, the team is working on uh, developing and building and producing uh, high-performance uh, supercars, basically. So that's one brand, essentially. The other uh, one is Remat's Technology. Remat's Technology is a tier one supplier. So we are providing technology that we have built up through the years, through the development of the likes of the Nevera. And we're selling that technology to other companies for example, let's take Hyundai for an example, that are maybe our, uh, one of our investors. So we are delivering, let's say, components to them, for example. We also provided components to Aston Martin, to Koenigsegg, and many, many more companies that unfortunately we can't really speak about so openly. But I can assure you that really, really nice uh, partners and, and customers, and we're really excelling there, and we're looking to, let's say, really um, ramp up volumes and become a very serious established tier one supplier and then also within this let's say remats group we are a strategic investor for a company called p3 which is essentially this robo taxi uh, business which uh, i'm sure you'll have some questions about later um what's what's the end goal where where do you want to be what, what's the grand vision how how would you uh explain that uh to i mean students but to all of us who are eager uh, to look at you guys succeed. Okay. Well, the end goal as a group is to provide essentially value uh, to our shareholders and of course just continue to build our, 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 our group, port group portfolio. For each brand, it has its own different um, mission and vision essentially. For Bugatti and for Remat, it's just to be the pinnacle uh, of excellence essentially in that field of, of being an OEM. Uh, for Remax Technologies to become a very reliable supplier uh, for for the industry worldwide, and uh, I guess these are our main main goals. Uh, I, I'm sure. I mean, we read it through a bunch of media uh, that there are great talents working at your company. You need to attract, of course, uh, the demand uh, yeah. <laughs> outseed supply. Uh, so, how do you attract and manage uh, great uh, great talent? Uh, at your company. I mean, if you go on the website and you just look at uh, the jobs and uh, positions that you have open yeah. for people, that there's a bunch of positions open, how do you make sure to attract and acquire great talent? Yeah, very good question. Um, I think I think there's two ways of looking at it. One is that um, you know when we started, we we were really looking for let's say as much talent that Croatia could provide. That's what we could. Um, let's say reach out and and and, and get, 
Um, now the tables have turned a little bit where every, there's lots of people that want to work for us. So there's, you know, everybody that loves cars would gladly work for Bugatti, right? Or gladly work for Riemann. So um, a lot of people are now reaching out to us. So um, long story short, we're looking for the best talent around the world, whatever, wh whatever and wherever that may be. We're employing, um, you know, of course, a lot of people uh, from Croatia and that's an ideal uh, solution a uh, situation that we can employ more and more people from Croatia but also uh, we might need to get some expertise that are also abroad and then you know some people work remotely some people move their families here and it's a bit of a mix but we employ over you know over 30 nationalities so really a lot of a lot of internationals also employed with us what are some of their first impressions of Croatia when they come here <laughs> yeah uh, some people really love it uh, well I won't say some people, I would say the at least majority, <laughs> the, the majority love it. Like when you think about it, um, you know, Croatia has so much to offer and it's really, really a, a nice country, um, you know, for many, many reasons. And, you know, a lot of the feedback is is, is really, really great. Um, it really depends, I guess, on the individual. Is their family happy here? You know, are they happy uh, in their environment? Do they make friends? There's a lot of factors, but uh, yeah. so far people really, really like it. And it's almost interesting to see that some of these very high level senior, whatever it may be, engineers, for example, come over with their family and, and really stay and have been with us and loyal loyal employees for a long, long time. Makes us proud. Yeah. It's <laughs> Even though almost like if you look at the, the media articles and people talking, uh, if you look at the comments or yeah. whatever, a uh, bunch of people are asking you, why are you still here in Croatia? Why are you sticking around? Why don't you move yeah. uh, or the production or the headquarters or whatnot outside Croatia? Why are you sticking around? I would say that's Mate really. That's That was Mate's vision from a very young age. Um, he's he's very proud to let's say be Croatian and he's he's he really wants to show himself but more so others that Croatia can let's say be a success story that we can build an amazing business uh, let's say a long-term business uh, a business that is let's say designing the best uh, hypercars supercars in the world uh, in Croatia and he's just a really proud guy that just wants to show it can be done and he wants to motivate others and he wants to bring people um, here uh, that will let's say continue to work and grow and let's say build knowledge so he, he just wants to show that it can be done I believe and uh, prove uh, some people wrong yeah, right prove some people wrong because I think there is a bit of a, a, a if I can be honest a little bit of a negative kind of vibe about business in Croatia it's difficult it's hard and of course it is of course it is but it's difficult everywhere yeah you know it's difficult everybody everywhere. has their own problems if, yes if it was easy of course you know everyone would be doing it right but Mate really wanted to show it can be done and he really just wanted to be loyal and true to 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 his roots and of course there was many ideas offers discussions but you know he's he 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 just wants sticking to stay around yeah, he's, at he's least for now oh, for um, sure, for a long time. there's not just uh, negative perspectives on entrepreneurship and uh, a business doing business in croatia were not so uh, high up on the, on the on bunch of lists uh, but there was also uh, some and many, unfortunately, you know, negative comments, negative uh, articles, perspectives of a yeah. bunch of people here in Croatia, mainly, mm -hmm. yes, I have yes. to say, unfortunately, yes. about the company and everything that you guys do. Yes. How do you personally and as a company, now, I wouldn't say fight back, but deal with all this stuff and push back and uh, mm. what's your take on this? Well, you said unfortunately, and I think that's the that's the, that's the key word here. I, I personally don't understand why um, some people are so negative uh, towards the company. I, I really don't see it. I uh, let's say as as a half Croatian, or let's say I call myself now Croatian, um, you know, I would be incredibly proud that there is a company that is you know employing so many people and delivering such amazing products to amazing brands and amazing let's say and customers all over the world. So that part I don't really understand, and I and I'm personally a little bit sad to see that. But um, how do we deal with it, I guess, was your second question. And that's honestly just uh, confidence and um, through belief that we will deliver on what we, let's say, say we will do. Uh, we will prove 
those, let's say, naysayers wrong, and we will show by example. If we pay attention to all of these negative uh, comments, it doesn't give Just us any value. Sucked in. It doesn't give us any value. We know what we're doing. We're proud of what we're doing. We're confident in what we're doing, and we will show people what we're doing. And uh, that's the best way for us to really uh, prove uh, everybody wrong. Yeah, with results and with everything. Results. That's, that's uh, really all that matters. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's difficult. There are challenges. Like there's challenges in, in, in every business. But we are focusing on our plan. We're focusing on our strategy. And we will focus on the deliverables. Uh, for you personally, like, what are some of pros and co uh, pros and cons of uh, working in such a company in mm -hmm. such an industry that is really growing, that is really uh, booming, and especially the company perspective, which has grown exponentially over the years? Yeah, well, um, I would say the con a little bit is that we are a young company, so we have to do so many things that I would say we have to do so many things that to catch up with the bigger companies or our competition that have been around for a long time so what we are doing in one year is probably what other companies have done in you know three or four years because we have to catch up so the workload is quite high and um, but that also has an advantage which i personally really like because you're involved in more topics you're shaping the company you are let's say um it, it, basically every day is dynamic and uh, you're solving problems uh, and solutions and strategies on a on on a daily basis so i guess it's 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 a pro and a con but really just just where we are two sides of the same yeah, hill, right exactly exactly so it's it's difficult but once but it's you enjoyable. succeed yeah but that's that's exactly it the 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 joy of succeeding or delivering a vehicle or you know signing a contract with a with a customer is 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 just a, a very nice feeling I mean, you've had a bunch of ups and downs. I mean, Mate talks about it uh, in his sessions that company nearly uh, was wiped out <laughs> yes. by uh, several different factors. Yes. What were like your personal, like the most difficult challenges that you faced uh, while being at the company mm -hmm. from a business perspective? Yeah, well, when I was, uh, when I started, I, I wasn't chief of staff. I was a business development manager. So I was essentially a salesman um, and looking to develop the business and going to different, let's say, customers. So my biggest challenge was actually making a sale um, when we were a younger and smaller company because it was very difficult to explain and to to convince, um, let's say, um, customers that we are here to stay, that we are able to deliver, that we have the team capable to deliver what we say we will and to persuade a, a big brand or a big company that is let's say has many other suppliers and other offers on the table it was very challenging to make them believe in us so that was how did you overcome it i guess it was did you? <laughs> yeah we did we did well no, not all of the time of course but yeah. most let's say i would uh, most maybe <laughs> some of the time we did and um yeah it was it was really just um being super transparent you know just honesty um showing the customers where we are what are our challenges what are our risks and then of course showing them the mitigations to their concerns so what can we do so if they're concerned about you know let's say x then what can we do to solve that yeah so let's say we were just coming up with action plans um making them believe that we can do it um showing them very clearly about the you know team leaders the people the resources we have the vision that we have and just being very honest how important is uh your from your perspective of course uh, your passion Mati's passion passion of you know all the key people in delivering this message do you think uh, it can be done when you're just maybe focused on the numbers or you don't really love it so much mm -hmm. uh how how big of deal uh does it make like from the perspective you're a small company like everybody who wants to start their own business <laughs> obviously they're going yeah. to start small yeah. uh what role do you see uh the passion has in that aspect a hu huge it's it, it, it's it's absolutely massive you know when we were in those times when um you know we we were maybe close to failing let's say and, and that happened you know at the beginning many many times when we were short on money and we were struggling and uh, we were not sure if the customer would uh, would would pay us or, or or sign the deal with us whatever um people people just kept their head down and were so passionate and believed so much that we would achieve our goals and that 
that small group of people at the beginning, let's say the first two, three, four hundred people, nobody really, I would say, uh, minded that we are we are we are struggling at the time. They were just so, um, so in belief of Mate's vision and so in belief of each other, and it was just a pure passion at the time, and that was really what brought us over the line. And I suppose you know customers or investors, they, they can that. see it, they, they can sense that. it. They feel that. They feel that, and that was. I think every customer visit that met us, that 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 came to Croatia, that saw the management, that saw, of course, that met Mate, spoke to Mate, um, that saw the team, saw our vision, but felt our passion. That was the game changer. It wasn't hard to make the sale after they came to Croatia to meet us. It was hard to get them to Croatia. Yeah. So it was almost like the biggest win was getting them on the plane and picking them up. That like once they were with us, I don't want to say we weren't <laughs> let's say concerned, but we knew that um our passion, our vision, our story, our our goals uh, and the people that we had uh, and uh, had and have um would persuade them and uh, so far so good. Uh, along the way, I suppose you have to, you've had uh, much success, but also a lot of failure. What were some of the key learning points for you personally uh, in terms of the moments of success, but failure as well? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess with failure, it was you know if you're if you're if you're down, just 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 get back up and keep going, right? So there were many many things, and failure is a part of the part of the story. It's a part of the process. Um, we just had to learn from our failures, and that was really the biggest thing that we could do. So whatever the failure was, we would very quickly come together, understand why we failed learn a lesson essentially lessons learned is always a big thing in, in startups and growing businesses so let's say looking at those lessons learned and and making sure that it doesn't happen again so um basically just not letting ourselves get down if we failed just moving on just keeping our heads uh, held high and just um, moving on. On that respect, uh, before we move on on the success part, uh, do you have any advice like uh, to help young people understand that it's all going to be okay, yes. that it's all part of the process, yes. that you know it's not the end of end of the world? Because sometimes you just feel like for this particular stuff, for yes. this particular topic or project yes. or grade or whatnot. Failure. Failure is the best way to learn in my own personal experience. I'm really a trial and error kind of guy. I I think failure is so uh, natural and normal. And if you understand that it is, and if you accept that failure will be a part of the story and you're willing to get up and go again, that's really the difference between who makes it and who doesn't in my perspective and there are many you know famous quotes uh, like this but they're true you know it's not how hard any you... advice to how to switch to that mindset of trial and error like like you are doing um well, you 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 just really have to believe it i i i <laughs> it's a good question it's, uh, how to do that i i think you just have to maybe let's say read up and learn a little bit about you know the people that made it and look at their journey look at steve jobs uh, the 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 famous let's say uh, apple guy right he he failed multiple times they there's there's a book on 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 his journey and he's failed so many times it's almost it's almost uh, comical but at the end of the day he changed the world he changed the way we interact with technology so you know michael jordan or or some of these amazing sports stars they they they, they how many let's say shots did they miss but they kept going you know so you really just have to understand that it's a part of life failure is unfortunately a part of life and it's a big part of business and understanding basically that you know the problems can happen at different scale yeah. of course if you look at the shots missed for michael yeah. it's not the same of course it's derived by shots missed but championships you lose and stuff like that in his case uh, <laughs> zero uh, but yet again it's it's a different scale of uh problems so i think it's uh, yeah. maybe important for them it's not the end of the world it's yeah. just Yes, it's 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 all about learning from that. You know, um, you know, just increasing or improving like a, by one percent all of the time, and just keep going. And it's very difficult. It's like failure hurts. It, Sometimes deeply. There, there, yes, there's no there's no other way to say it. Failure hurts, um, and it's not easy to accept. Sometimes, of course, you can get a little bit down about it. Sometimes you can feel embarrassed. Um, but everybody fails. 
So you shouldn't feel embarrassed. Many companies fail. Many companies have launched products and they're not as successful as they uh, planned. It's very, very normal. Um, and all I can say is that just look at the history, look at the data, look at the people that have made it, look and ask how many, ask them how many times that they fail or read about it and then you'll realize. If you could talk to your younger, younger self, is there some message or something that you would like to say besides sticking <laughs> on physics and math? Yeah, well, in general, be, be in the moment. Uh, and what I mean by that is you're sometimes put in different situations. And as a young person, I was sometimes, let's say, bored or ign ignoring the, 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 the environment or the situation that I, that I was in. So, for example, if I was in a a math class that I wasn't very interested in, I would kind of zone out and I would, you know, not pay attention. But actually, if I would tell my younger self now, I'd say, listen, pay attention. You're, you're in the moment. You're, you have an opportunity to learn something. If you think there's a better place for you to be, then go to that better place, but don't waste time. I think time is precious. And for me, I would just tell my younger self to, you know, optimize and use all of the time you can get to, uh, yeah, basically grow your knowledge and, 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 and have fun. So uh, the final two questions, uh, key messages for people working with young, great, uh, brilliant, proactive minds here in Croatia, parents as well, managers, uh, in companies who are going to work with those uh, younger generations, uh, what would be your uh, key message for them today? Good question. And maybe for the parents, I would say, you know, um, support your children um, in what they are passionate about. I think if, um, if your children are doing something that they're passionate about, they'll always be happy, whether that's, you know, going to drive them to great financial success or not. I don't think it matters. I think happiness and, you know, spending your time in the areas that someone likes is the is is the best uh, way to do that so i would say you know be supportive and um and let's say accept their 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 journey yeah and and to to teachers um and professors i would say if there is if there are students that are maybe not so interactive um in a class or in a lecture ask them why try to figure out what you can do better to interact with them. There are many teachers that I, let's say, I think the best teachers that I had were the ones that recognized that I was maybe not performing well and, and, and addressed that with me. You know, took five minutes of their time to show that they cared. And that changed my feedback back towards them. It changed my approach to actually say, okay, you know what, I'm not going to not care. I'm actually going to try to, um, how would I say, uh, impress this teacher who took five minutes of his time to try to help me. So now I'm going to try to help him back. So give a little bit of time and you'll get a lot, uh, a lot more uh, response. And, and what, would you, uh, what, would you, what would you say to, to kids around Croatia, uh, young minds, what would be your key message for them today? Everything is possible. You can be, as a bit cheesy to say it, but you really can be what you want to be. Um, chase your goals. Surround yourself with like-minded people is a big one. So, you know, if you are around negative people that will pull you down, they are not the right people that you need to be around. So I guess my main messages would be be around like-minded people, believe in yourself. I would say also be prepared to, um, let's say, fail at times, but uh, build a mindset where you can get back up and go again and have fun along the along the way and uh, I think uh, use your time wisely. Thank you Sasha for this uh, inspiring <laughs> session and for being part of this project and until next time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Philip. Cheers.